Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. If you notice, I didn't do the, the Coco Chanel. Although I, I've just pretty much done it anyway. So, welcome back to my Coco Chanel. Now in today's video I'm going to be talking about hamstrings and hamstring training and the anatomy of them and it's one of those muscle groups that probably for guys falls behind second place to glutes in terms of the most under trained muscle groups. If you probably look around your local gym there'll be very few male trainers who are training hamstrings or doing RDLs or even doing RDLs correctly but there'll be a lot of them doing cheek curls bench press and a good old pack deck. Now the hamstrings need specific attention in order to grow a few hamstring curls at the end of a leg workout isn't going to suffice and I think because it's one of those muscle groups that we can't actually see from the front it's massively undervalued and undertrained. Now if you are one of these people who doesn't train hamstrings very often or at all then listen up because this video is about to change your life and it's going to give you a wealth of knowledge that you can then go away with in terms of implementing hamstrings into your weekly split and how to train them properly. So let's first look at why you should be training hamstrings then. Firstly, the function. The most common exercise for hamstrings focus on how they function in an open chain, basically where the feet are not in contact with the ground to create knee flexion. While these movements can help the appearance of the muscle, they do not prepare the hamstrings to perform efficiently as has been proven by Newman 2010. Moving on to the performance of the hamstrings, they play a crucial role in providing stability at the knee joint. Probably the most fundamental function they serve they function eccentrically or isometrically to control the deceleration of knee flexion. Finger exercises such as heavy split squats or lunges. Well conditioned hamstrings provide an effective co-contraction with the quadriceps. In other words, the stronger your hamstrings are, the faster you can stop, then change direction and resume your progress. They're also really, really important for injury prevention. Many people still believe that the quads are the most important speed muscles in the body, which is, is not true. This false belief has led to many people short-siding their results by becoming excessively quad dominant, like myself. This is something I did for many of my early years when training and creates what I like to refer to as the flaky pancake look. You will look great from the front, but turn the side on, you look like you could fall down a grid. A very effective hamstring development program that's sure to reduce your risk of lower body injury and drastically increase your speed and agility is your best bet here. Now let's move into the anatomy of the hamstring muscles. Hamstrings are a group of muscles and their tendons at the rear of the upper leg. They include the biceps femoris, the simintidius and the simembrinosus, um, pronounce those correctly. The hamstrings have few key functions, flexing the knee joint, adducting the leg and extending the thigh to the backside of the body, i.e. your bum. They're used in walking, running, jumping, just to name a few. The hamstring muscles have their origin where the tendons attach to the bone at the ischial tuberosity of the hip, often called the sitting on your arse bones, and the femur. Hamstring tendons flank the space behind the knee the most medial muscle, the semimbrunosus, insert at the tibia bone. The semimbrunosus inserts on the superior part of the medial tibia, the most lateral hamstring, the biceps femoris, inserts on the lateral side of the fibula. Now we're finished up with the anatomy, we're going to move into the different types of fibres now. The hamstrings were predominantly believed to be composed of fast switch muscle fibres, about 70% or so, but is more frequently or more recently been shown by Ivan Galidis, apologies for the name pronunciation, yeah, and co, that the hamstrings are a much more even split between type 1 and type 2 fibres. We can see that the hamstrings are designed for high forces and high velocities. A little look at how we need them to function helps tell us why and shows you why a lot of people we see simply adding a few slow sets of hamstring curls at the end of a quad session really aren't getting the most bang for the buck. Now, the RDL versus deadlift, although both will activate the hamstrings, you're going to get and feel more activation and stretch through the hamstrings, be able to recruit a better mind-muscle connection whilst also using a lighter load 
to overload the hamstrings if you are including an RDL over a deadlift. Because the hamstring brings the greatest amount of force when decelerating knee extension and hip flexion prior to contact with the ground, it's important to use exercise that involve both hip and knee joints simultaneously. Effective strategies for strengthening the hamstring focus on keeping the feet in closed kinetic chain while creating both knee and hip extension. So it's important to know if the feet are in contact with an object such as like a stability ball um, or held in place by a GSD hamstring bench, the body will act as if it's in a closed chain. So moving into hip extension, which include triple extension, so the ankle, knee and hip joints is the basis for running, jumping and squatting and the foundation of most movement. Hip extension is the most powerful, important component of the triple threat, although the glutes are the main workhorse of hip extension, the hamstrings are fought to account for about a fair of torque generated. I quickly want to run over some key points when it comes to the RDL and some complete no-nos you will often see at the gym. One of those first and most common things we often see with the RDL is the rounding of the lumbar and the upper back. The lower back often starts from picking up the weight. This is going to cause unwarranted stress on the lower back and very little stimulus through the hamstrings. Secondly, as you can see here, head position. If you're looking into the mirror at how we look whilst doing these, you're going to be doing them wrong. The head should be kept in a neutral, so keep staring at the floor and this will keep the spine aligned and in a safe position whilst completing the deadlift. Last but not least is the range of the movement. Just because you are doing a deadlift doesn't mean you need to be touching the floor of each rep. You want to only be moving through the range that your hamstrings allow. Otherwise, as you can see here, the upper back will begin to round. We need to then retract the scapula and keep it fixed here. Another hip extension exercise that is great for hamstring you can add in is either a 45 degree hyper, back extensions or good mornings. Out of the three, I believe you get more bang for your buck. Uh, and as stated by Brett Contreras, the good mornings, as you are gonna get more mechanical tension from this exercise due to the eccentric load and when the load is on during peak stretch of the hamstrings. Now, moving into knee flexion exercises. A study in 2000 showed that peak muscle activation came from gliding style movements, such as the gliding rower or the Swiss ball pull-ins. Both will work to keep the hips extended and also flex the knees at the same time. So they will require a lot more core stability and overall are a great, a great way just to light up the hamstrings. Lion leg curls will also be a great knee flexion exercise with the choose between seated lion and dumbbell lion. I'd say choose which ever feels best personally for you. For me, I prefer the dumbbell variation as it allows again for more mechanical tension at the bottom portion when the hamstring is fully stretched. However, it doesn't allow for much activation when the hamstrings are fully contracted at the top. Moving into explaining the foot position, the question which is often asked is, is it possible to target certain parts of the hamstrings? This will be largely down to foot position during exercises. If we point our toes out, it's been proven to activate more of the lateral hamstring. And if with our toes pointing inwards, it's been shown to activate more of the medial hamstring. So if you want to target all parts of the hamstring, it's important to vary foot position, speed of movements, load, and also include both hip extension and knee flexion movements. Looking into how to include hamstring within your training split, my favorite split personally for leg training is to map out two days in a week, which split quads and hamstrings separately. For example, I'll generally hit hamstrings and glutes first thing on a Monday and quads at the back end of the week due to hamstrings being a weaker muscle group for me because of my earliest training, being a bit of a bro trainer. A fine splitting then leaves me with more energy to focus on individually compound movements when I'm using larger loads, which again, gives me more energy. What does the perfect workout look like then for hamstrings? Well, there isn't one per se, but my bread and butter for hamstring workout would look a little like this. So starting with a barbell RDL, about four times eight reps, this is gonna be our hip extension exercise. Then I'll generally do maybe a single leg RDL, three times eight or 10 reps. I find unilateral movements are great for even out weak sides or imbalances and keeping a bit of a challenge during the workout. 
Third exercise, maybe a 45 degree hyper or Nordic hamstring curl, four times 10 to 12 reps. And then I'll move into, a, as I said before, a dumbbell hamstring curl for four times 12 reps, which would be our knee flexion movement. Then to finish off, I'll do a couple of sets of ballistic movements, such as jump squats, to help recruit more of the fast twitch fibers. Now, I hope you find this video helpful, guys, and I hope it gives you a better explanation of how you can include hamstring training and the importance of it into your weekly split. If you would like to see more of my hamstring workouts with full video tutorials, then you can hop into the link in the description box below, which is the MyCoach School. Or alternatively, you can drop me an email directly, which I'll leave my email in the description box about my one-to-one -one coaching. And if this is your first time visiting my channel, make sure that you subscribe. And if, again, you found this video helpful, please give it a massive thumbs up and a like because it'll mean a lot to me personally. And I will catch you in my next video.